Hi there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. We're rapidly approaching the holiday and Christmas season and there's no doubt the Switch will be on many people's lists of the must-have gadget of the year. Of course, a Switch without a selection of games is a fairly expensive paperweight. And sure, there's many a big name one to choose from, although what we'd like to do today is present a hatful of indie games, 15 to be more accurate, that we think you should consider playing or perhaps giving to others over the forthcoming festive period. In a slight twist to other rundowns you might have seen, we're going to focus on those indies that are awesome games and yet are somehow perhaps not a bigger deal within the Switch community as maybe they should be. We wanted to take the time to suggest some of the Switch's indie unsung heroes. Let's get started, shall we? In alphabetical order, and the first of these lesser-known Switch indie games, we have Axiom Verge, which hit the gaming scene back in the first quarter of 2015. This one popped onto the Switch in early October and still remains a first-rate action-adventure Metroidvania. With its art style somewhere in the middle of 8-16-bit to 16 -bit graphics, it's stunning to look at in the handheld mode and one that seems to really work best as a portable. Even if you've played this on another system, it holds up well for a replay and is well worth your consideration. The most recent game of this year's holiday guideline, Battle Chef Brigade, came out in late November. Down to its brass tacks, this is an intricate puzzle game the developers have been able to disguise as a platformer. Its success for us also comes with its beautiful graphics, stunning sound, and how the characters' playful combat, and of course the puzzles, put Battle Chef Brigade into its own little place in the market. It's pretty unique and one we're sure you'll mostly all enjoy. This multi-award winning 2D horror game, Bulb Boy, didn't get the market cut through we think it deserves. One day, you playing as Bulb Boy awake from a nightmare to discover that evil has overshadowed your home. Your family have vanished and there's monsters hiding in the shadows. It's up to you and your glass bulb head to go out and save the day. Originally launched on the PC way back in 2004, Cave Story became a much-loved game on the scene and saw ports to the Wii, DSi, 3DS and other non-Nintendo consoles. The Switch version of Cave Story Plus dates from a 2011 build and yet still plays and sound as great as ever. Whilst it's relatively short at two or so hours, its multiple game endings and choices make for excellent replayability. From the team at Dreadbit, in Ironcast we find one of the most in-depth and engaging tile-matching puzzlers we've seen on any platform. First launched on the PC back in 2015, this port onto the Switch remains just as innovative as it did back then. It remains touchingly rather addictive, and because of the multiple and varied elements to it, it has a huge amount of replayability that you can enjoy in a long-term or a short-term sitting. Lumo is definitely one for fans of modern isometric platforming. While the static camera angle can at times feel a hindrance, the audio and visual presentation are steps ahead of the classics of this genre. The real winner, of course, is the gameplay which offers players a tremendous amount of fun and a fairly decent challenge. For anyone looking for something even harder, Lumo also comes with an old school mode, but in any case, this one offers a retro-styled, enjoyable adventure with a clean and modern feel. One way of thinking about Portal Knights would be to have it as a fun gateway into the world of sandbox style gameplay. With its Minecraft and Dragon Quest leanings, it's nice and easy to get into the game and you're able to get crafting and building with relative ease. As should be apparent on screen, Portal Knights offers a colourful and vibrant world that also comes with local and online co-op. This one can be a real time sink, with there being hours upon hours of content. In the game, the combat is fluid and the gameplay a loop of finding new portals can see your evening gaming session easily turning into a fairly decent late night. Rive came out in mid-November and is a twin-stick shooter with some mightily fine platforming aspects. Originally expected on the Wii U, this is one of those wonderful pick-up-and-play games that feels utterly and perfectly at home on the Switch. Particularly when you play in the handheld mode, on your commute, say, on the train on the way to work in the morning. It's easy to play, quick, fast and fun. It's also reasonably hard as nails and by that we're going to say it's cuphead levels of difficult, which for fans of these type of games will be a real draw. So if you're up for a challenge, there's plenty to keep you occupied here. 
In Slime Sand, we have an energizing Twitch-based platformer that should put a big old grin onto the face of anybody who plays it. It ships with a snappy control system, easy to learn gaming mechanics, and comes with a relatively balanced level of difficulty and some excellently done pixel art, graphics, and sound. There's certainly an element to it which seems focused on speed, and it's definitely one that any speedrunners or leadership board hunters will be itching to play. And here we have Snipper Clips, one of the early Switch titles that hit the market in March. This is an action puzzler where paper pals snip and clip must cut each other to pieces to overcome the tricky obstacles within the game. This one's at its very best when playing with other people. Four of you can play in co-op mode, which has honestly seen us have the most amount of group gaming fun of the year. As we approach this holiday season, Snipper Clips should be on your list as a fabulous party game for you or your friends and loved ones. While video games based on Hollywood blockbusters have tended to be on the sub-optimal side of things, the team at WayForward have well and truly come to the table with this 2D 16-bit inspired action platformer. Hitting the Switch in October with its pixel art stylings and general mix and mashup of run and gunning, platform and exploration, The Mummy Demastered is a satisfying romping adventure that should appeal to a wider base than those usually accustomed to this type of experience. Perhaps one of the better known games in this countdown, Thimbleweed Park came out in March on the PC, mobile and other consoles and saw a port onto the Switch this past September. We've previously played this one on the PlayStation 4 and iOS, although it also feels very much at home on the Switch, where you can choose between using the Joy-Cons and touchscreen depending upon your playstyle. Ultimately, Thimbleweed Park is a love letter to fans of the adventure classics. Think Manic Mansion and Secret of Monkey Island. If you're looking to replay these type of games and have a soft spot for point and click stories, Thimbleweed Park should definitely be on your list. World of Goo is one of those games that's a true and honest classic. While it comes with plenty of depth, it's instantly enjoyable with an almost perfect cadence. While many of you will have played this before, the Switch version is certainly worth a second go, if anything for the remote on-the-go co-op. If this is your first opportunity to pick up World of Goo, then it's an absolute 100% must play. In our minds, this is the definitive version. Wolverblade somehow takes us back to an age of the Commodore 64 and the likes of the Golden Axe. Of course, this game certainly looks far, far better than those of that age, and all in all, Wolverblade is a fine achievement, particularly the gameplay design and truly scrumptious animation. It's packed with lots of content, comes with a deeply rewarding combat system, to some, however, the gore may be a bit too much on the high side. That said, the cartoon nature of the game somewhat seems to offset set this possible issue. With Yono and the Celestial Elephants, we're at the end of this Switch holiday seasonal countdown of must-have less well-known indie titles. Yono is one of those games that's a pleasure to play just for the thrill of enjoyment itself. It's clever, ever so cutesy to look at, and comes just with the right amount of puzzles, adventuring, and combat. All in all, it's a classical RPG that features a decent lore, fun boss battles, wonderful visuals, and a cracking soundtrack. And with Yono and the Celestial Elephants, we're very much out of time for today's video. We hope you've enjoyed it, and as we usually say, if you've any thoughts on this video and the selection, please let us know in the usual places. Once again, we honestly love our Switch, and for us, it's been the console of the year, and we're very much looking forward to see what happens with it next. Cheers once again, everybody. Here's wishing you all the best regards of the season, and hope to see you here again soon for some more indie game videos.